This is morning prayer on the Monday of Holy Week. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And from Lamentations. Is it nothing to you, all who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind, and we hold silence so to do. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our reading uh, today is from Luke, Luke 22, starting at the first verse. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John said, uh, saying, go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They asked him, where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house. He enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is finished and fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it amongst yourself. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying that the cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the the, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going, as it has been determined. But woe to the one by whom he is betrayed. 
Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. This week I'm going to read for you from my favourite uh, poet, uh, who is John O'Donoghue, uh, the Irish uh, poet, priest and author who died uh, before his time at age 53. Uh, and uh, this is his um, uh, poem called The Agony in the Garden. Whatever veil of mercy shrouds the dark wound that stops weeping in no one cannot stop the torrent of night when it buries thought and heart beneath the black tears of the earth. Through scragged bush, the moon discovers his face, dazed inside the sound of Gethsemane, subsiding under the weight of silence that entombs the cry of his terrified prayer. What light could endure the dark he entered, the void that turns the mind into a ruin, haunted by the tattered screeching of birds who nest deep in hunger that mocks all care. Still, he somehow stands in that nothingness, raising the chalice of kindness to bless. John O'Donoghue, The Agony in the garden. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us bring to the Father our prayers of intercession through Christ, who gave himself for the life of the world. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity there may grow a rich union in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who, weighted down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that we with those who have died in faith may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. And the collect uh, for this day. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and his humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ who bore our sins upon the cross set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.